this is the wire that goes on the far side of that fuse box on the terminal opposite where the battery comes in and the starter wire goes out so I don't forget. And then I have a couple of ground wires. I'm going to disconnect down here. Those are going to come out next. Here's a better look of those ground wires. So this, the big guy, just goes right over to the frame over here. He's strapped to the starter wire. The two smaller ones, this guy and then there's one with two wires in it, they both go into this harness here, I believe, because it's just above the fan. Very hard to see all the crap in there. But I think it should be pretty obvious putting it back. The only other wire that would fall nearby is the one that goes to the starter back in here. Okay, disconnecting the air conditioning wiring. This must be for the clutch. It's a gray connector. It's got Ears on both sides, you have to lift up and pry back, so it's a little tricky. And this is, I just connected this earlier, it's got a purple boot on it down there, and that's uh, must be the pressure sensor. And then the alternator, it's got one bolt and one nut. Uh, can't see it. So I might have got my finger on it down here. You can see that holds the main power wire and then this connector down here it's kind of a tough one to get out you gotta lift up on this tab and then push back but it's buried down in there so I get a screwdriver in there to pry it up and then push back with the other hand and that got it out and so I was looking and they left the wiring harness intact except for the wire here for the fan which they cut. So now I have to change the whole wire harness. But I guess it's not the end of the world. Okay, there's one more connector hiding down there, kind of next to the manifold below the oil filter. It's got a white uh, plastic cap interlock thing and it's got a brown wire I can see comes out of the same rat's nest area of this harness. I don't know, maybe it's a crankshaft position sensor. Not sure. Get him disconnected. Okay, I got that guy off. You can see down in there he's got a little green boot on it. There's yet another one next to it, so I have to get that from the bottom. Okay, I pulled this hose off. It was the second hardest thing to take apart so far. It was really on that plastic nipple. But this is just the uh, vacuum assist for the brakes so I'll tuck him out of the way okay disconnecting the shift cable linkage I was able to get this wonder bar type thing in here and just pop that off the ball there's another one below it I have to get and then there's a Torx, Torx head screw down here that holds the bracket on a little bit of WD-40 in there before I popped it off seemed to help and that bolt in there is a an E12. Okay, then there's a rubber boot that goes over that black plug you can see down in there. So you take out the E12, which is in the center of the screen now, and then just lift it off that, that little peg-like thing down there. Okay, I took the throttle cable out here, and you just have to pry it up or pull it up through a couple of dimples here. And then it's kind of wedged in with this thing here. And he's got to get a screwdriver under this side over on the far. Pry that up, and then you can slip the cable out. Of course, you have to turn this up here to get some slack. Mine was really caught in here, and I didn't actually understand how it came apart at first because it was so tight in there. I sprayed WD-40 in, and I gave it a little tap with the screwdriver, and then it moved freely in here, which allowed me to figure it out. And then this guy up here is just uh, 
two plastic ears you have to com compress on this to, to get it out of this bracket and then it just snaps out of this guy to the side that frees it up okay I'm going to take this connector off lifting up on this pushing it back it was easy it's a red guy and then push this plastic clamp thing out here if I can I'd like to not damage it too much if I can help it all right I'll work that out okay looking at the sensors from the bottom now I have to get that last one I thought but there's actually still two more so the one I have apart that's probably oil pressure then there's one here that's probably the crank position sensor and then the one up here is the knock sensor it's got a bolt a bolt in the center of it so I'm going to take those out now okay got them disconnected so the yellow one I think is crank shaft position sensor the green up here goes to the upper upper one with the black plastic sticking out up here and that must be oil pressure and then the knock sensors off here and then those were the starter wires that are still hanging there the red ones and then I'm going to disconnect the electric fan there next and it has a green boot and you have to press down on the end of that guy to unlock it Okay, looking in the driver's side wheel well, this is the backup light switch on the manual transmission. I'll take that guy off. And then I have to unclip him from cable clamp here. And it goes back in there. There might be another clamp to get off. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the clutch hydraulic line. Pry this clip off. I don't think it has to come all the way off, but just up and then this should pull out which I have fought with before I had to put multiple vice grips on here to hold it and then pry it off because it's it was rusted in there pretty bad you can still see the teeth marks when I did it last time and I'll probably have to do something similar so here's my method of getting this thing out you can see it it actually rotates in there so it's not totally bound up but it's really will not come out so I I have two vice grips to hold it, to hold onto the pipe, and I get a screwdriver in here and pry it out. And it's uh, it's not going easy, that's for sure. I got it apart, but I think I damaged the stupid plastic line beyond repair. I'm going to have to get a new one of those. The thing is just really tough to get out. I don't know if it's because it's all rusty in there or what it was, but I've had that trouble both times I've taken it apart. Okay, taking the uh, <coughs> serpentine belt off, there's a 3 8 inch square hole down there for the to put a ratchet in so that you can release it. You can do this, I've done it before from the bottom, just pushing up with a 1x2 and then having somebody else take the belt off, but by myself I can't do it, so I had to go spend $30 on a thin profile ratchet to get down in there, and the distance here is so tight. A normal ratchet doesn't fit, so I'll take the belt off. So here's the view of the tensioner on the new engine that's going in. Put the ratchet in here, and then you could move that tensioner easily to get the belt on and off. Okay, with the belt off, I could take the alternator out. There's three bolts, two on the top, and one here. And here's the alternator with the two top bolts, one on the bottom, and it looks like they're all the same length bolt, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Okay, the air conditioning compressor is free. There's three bolts. One is here, going into this boss. There's two on the bottom. All the bolts are the same length, so again, no problem mixing them up. Okay, I'm going to get this rat's nest of a wiring harness out of here. There's no joy down in here between the fan and the air conditioning <clears throat> and the oil dipstick tube. But So I have to disconnect here. I'm pretty sure this is the throttle position sensor. 
This is an idle air control, a little stepper motor that moves the valve back and forth so that it gets uh, air when the throttle plate's closed. And I already took off this intake air temperature or whatever that was. This looks like the uh, fuel injector. The fuel injectors connect off of here. So I just have to take these guys apart. There's a little press in on that guy. Purple. And this guy's got the clip you push back and, and then down. Can't quite do it with one hand, I don't think. Oh, there it goes. It's also purple. <clears throat> So anyway, I'll continue to take that apart. I actually have one of these stupid plastic push-in deals here to hold the harness. Just to pry out. And then down, down here under the manifold, there's one of these clips that has to be undone. They're usually not too bad if you can get a screwdriver in there and pop it out like that. Okay, it looks like I didn't have to disconnect that uh, knock sensor. He comes up to this bunch here and there's a plug I can take off here which would have allowed me to leave the knock sensor intact. A little hard to see down there but it's right down up. That blue down there. So I'll take that apart. It's pretty awkward to get to but you gotta push this uh, tab here down and then back. It snaps in, in under here. And so it's hard to get anything in there, but I was able to get a screwdriver and push it out. Not too fun. Okay, it took me a while to figure out how to get this connector off, but there's a little tab here. It's just impossible to see here in this, these conditions. But you rotate that tab, and it loosens up the plastic around it. So you push this tab down. I can't do it with one hand, but if you push them down, it moves this out of the way, and then it comes off of comes off of this nipple, and that's part of the I think that's part of the evap system where they take the fumes back from the tank and shove them into the intake. So I have that guy apart now. Okay, just past I'm looking down over the transmission here where the shift linkage used to connect. There's the E12 bolt and that nub that the rubber goes on. And just down here, there's a clip for the wiring harness that has to be released. I think that's for the backup light. And then also, there's a connector here, down in here. It has to be undone. I believe that hooks up the oxygen sensor, the one that's on downstream. So I'll get those two off and I I think that's the last thing, except for the fuel line, it has to be disconnected. Okay, and I also had to take off this guy. He's the, I'm pretty sure that's the engine engine coolant temperature sensor, plugs into the water line. Then there's the, uh, right here, this is the oxygen sensor connector, and he's got one of those plastic doohickeys that holds it. I have to pry that out. And then further down, Oh, where is it? It's hard to see. Way down here, where I disconnected the other oxygen sensor, you can see a, another time where they have a plastic doohickey pushed into a bracket. I have to pop that guy out as well to get the wiring harness free. So I might have to do that from underneath the car. Okay, now I gotta take the fuel line off. It's right here. I cleaned it out with brake cleaner that sprays in there hard. It was all full of gunk and sand. Didn't want that to get in the fuel line. I took off this little safety clip they put on here. That just snaps off. And then you use this uh, this tool here to go around the gas line and push into that connector to release some springy deals. I've never been a fan of these, especially under the car. They fill with sand and dirt and it's just sometimes they're impossible to get apart. It's probably not too bad on top of the car here but we'll see. Okay gas line is disconnected. A little bit of a fight but I got it. Now I realize I still have to disconnect the heater hoses down there and I've got those band clamps on that are not so fun to get off. 